I don't understand how this was possible. I am not an SAO fan. It's probably the first anime I ever dropped and when I finally got around to finishing season one, I hated it. I considered it the worst anime series I completed for quite some time. And then the movie came and again did little to impress me. While it was a small step up from the first season, I found it to be a mess that wasn't able to take advantage of its admittedly interesting ideas. But then I rewatched the movie at Akon and really liked it. The comedy was good, the story was interesting, and the emotions were on point. Sure, there are some flaws, very noticeable flaws. For example, Kirito being over powered as usual, and the reason this was called ordinal scale seemed to be more pretentious than anything, not to mention some of the plot elements didn't make that much sense, but none of these issues felt like that big of a deal. So what did the movie do to change my mind so much? Well, let's get into this to answer my own curiosity as much as anything. This video is going to be more positive than it normally would be if I reviewed this show since I covered most of the negative things in my vlog review I did a few months ago, so there's no reason to just repeat myself. Plus, if I'm going to explain why I like something, I don't think I should go over all the reasons I don't like it, if that makes sense. So the biggest change between the two viewings for me was the fact that the one at Akon was in the English dub well before it was in the theater in the English sub. Now, this is not a dub I'm particularly fond of, but it was okay. Though I think the mere fact that it wasn't in English helped to make his show a lot stronger as a whole, at least for me. The easiest example to talk about here is the comedy. There's a lot of good banter between Kirito and his friends, especially near the beginning of the movie, and I think just hearing it in English made it a lot better for me, and this is an example of why I really do prefer uh, dubs to subs, especially for comedy, since I don't remember finding anything all that funny in the Japanese, while there are a lot of good jokes here in the English version. This ended up laying a good foundation for the world as they were going to establish how the world worked for this movie, and the comedy just kept this world development from getting boring. Another aspect I found the dub improved was the scientific believability of the events specifically regarding the memories of the SAO survivors. Again, this does involve a little bit of scientific mumbo jumbo, but it seemed believable enough to not just want to get up and scream that they have no idea how science works or anything. I don't know if this was just because I did not catch that information when I watched it subbed, or if they actually changed the script a little bit when translating it to English, but either way, it made some sense here. And again, this is more proof of why I like dubs, as it's very easy to like miss a line of dialogue in the sub, especially when you're trying to watch the scene as a whole too, and all also read and well multitasking is hard. But I think the biggest change and the reason that I like the show now is because of the emotional impact the movie had on me and it's also a change I can't really explain why it happened. As I already mentioned the comedy was here which set a good foundation for the show and surprisingly I felt the romance growing between Kirito and Asuna. These are not characters I typically care all that much about but there is enough going on with the events of the movie and the challenges Asuna specifically is facing that really drove Kirito to want to help her and we saw the love between the two of them. This led up to the final battle where Asuna was really afraid but she still had the courage to want to fight anyway and well that was just really cool. One of the things I've always liked about the movie is how the start had Asuna be the best fighter and Kirito being pretty much useless but this changed part way through the movie and it was something that I was sad to see. Though as I think about it more now I understand where they were going here and by having Asuna grow as a character who could not fight she really has to overcome her fear and that led to her decision to join the final battle and again a lot of power from that scene. And speaking of battles, I felt they were a lot stronger this time watching it, with the final battle being the most notable one here. Before, I had complained that the battle was too chaotic to see what was going on, but I did not have that issue with the rewatch. It might have been because I didn't have to read the subtitles when watching the battle, or the fact that it was on a smaller screen so it's easy to see all of it, but it really did feel epic, probably being my favorite battle in the entire franchise, and it's shaping up to be one of the best battles of this past year. And this could be overthinking a little bit, but I also really like the symbolism here of the final battle, with it showing the heroes defeating their past of SAO and doing it with all of them fighting together with their different abilities. I also found the various themes explored came across better this time, but I think this is partly because I already knew what they were trying to do. The idea of wanting to escape one's past versus embracing it and the challenges it brought are one of the things that the movie is built around, and it's an idea that makes a lot of sense as the story moves away from trying to escape the game to dealing with the aftermath. You have some characters like Kirito who are stuck in the past, and others think it'd be better just to forget all that, while the truth is somewhere between the two of these. This is something that really connects to me because I believe it's the hard times of life that make us who we are and they strengthen the friendships that we have. Now if the movie could have really just capitalized on this more instead of just having Kirito be right by beating up everyone else it would have been a lot better but still the themes that they did explore made the movie more interesting. So yes, I actually like this movie now and I'm excited to see season 3. I remember back when I first watched it, I was hoping for a cool action show that made enough sense to be enjoyable and that's largely what I got out of this movie with the rewatch. Cool action, some fun parts, emotional moments, and an interesting, if messy, plot. So I raised my final score for this movie from a 4 out of 10 to a 7 out of 10 and changed the rating from skip it to worth checking out. 
I would not recommend this to everyone since it does have some quite glaring flaws which would ruin it for some, but if the idea of a cool action show that examines the aftermath of being trapped in a video game sounds interesting, you'll probably at least enjoy this one somewhat. Anyway, that wraps up my review. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.